السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ഹമദുഹുസ്തീ <laughs> له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير ونشهد ان محمدا بشيرا ونذيرا وعبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد امام المتقين وسيد المرسلين وعلى اله وصحبه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن اياته ان خلق لكم من انفسكم ازواجا لتسكنوا اليها وجعل بينكم موده ورحمه إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا ادخلوا في السلم كافة ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا أصبروا وَالصَّابِرُ وَالرَّابِطُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Dear brothers and sisters, today is the 11th of Muharram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those, those who fasted on the day of 10th Muharram, one before also, one after also. May Allah forgive our sins of the previous year as promised by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The topic today is dispute among parents. We are very habitual of talking dispute between husband and wife and leave the importance of the children who call those husband and wife as parents. Most of the times dispute among husband and wife is seen as a marital dispute. 
with no consideration to the children who depend and rely upon their parents for positive development in their life. For the determine, for the determination and for the betterment of the children and for the family as a whole, we must look the dispute between husband and wife in response to the family and children and we should also look as disputes among the parents. So our angle of resolving the, those disputes will be much easier. Such a strategy would focus on the value of the family which we talk about family values, we celebrate also family day in, in Canada, though it is a continual process for each and every one of us. It will also solve a dispute between man and woman in a marital bond. Since every parent may face tension challenges in their life, it is not a question of avoiding those challenges or disputes. But it is a question how we deal our differences as parents between mom and father. Our parents, we are all parents, but our parents as a child, if I am a child, must choose how they will act when the dispute occurs. Our parents since the beginning of their marriage until the day irritation or dispute developed among them, it is important to understand those differences and then to accept the differences and try to adjust them. It is sad that we see our families torn apart, father going this way, mother going this way and the children are torn apart in litigation in the court. No, it should not be there. We all know that it has been said in a form of proverb that espousal knots are decided in the heaven. Why we say that? Because the gift of a spouse to us is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu was salam was gifted his spouse by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Eve alayhi salatu wa salam, and that gift Sayyidina Adam accepted without any question. And such is the gift when we marry to each other. This is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we agree to that proverb, it is just to accept as Adam alayhi salatu salam accept the gift of Eve. You are called to accept, you are called means as husband to accept the gift Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you in the form of spouse. God gave us a spouse which completes us in ways we haven't even learned yet. But before we decide to marry the consent of parents is also important. The compatibility between the boy and the girl who would become parents one day is also very important. And such a marriage where the whole family is agreed upon is blessed. Is blessed to procreate with sufficient of sustenance and abundance of provisions in this life. Dear brothers and sisters, Maintaining harmony in marriage as parents has been challenged since the time of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wassalam. Two people beginning their marriage together and if they decide to go their own way in a very selfish way, then of course it will not be blessed and the worst is yet to come what happens <coughs> later on. So, we learn by experience 
but we need to learn by the example in the history of our God assigned prophets and messengers. Allahi, alayhi salatu was salam, jamiyan. We have the example of beautiful marriage between Sayyidina Ali and Bibi Fatima. They also had the challenge. They also had the challenges in their life. But Prophet was there. He will hold one hand from Ali, the other hand from Bibi Fatima and join. And then he will talk lovingly. Do we have parents or parents-in-law of that kind? We need to learn. We need to learn. We as parents are the role model for our children and those who are watching us to be their role model would not like us to slip from the righteousness to split from the marital bond. The correct action parents take is a gift from Almighty Allah. The correct action the parents take as a gift from Almighty Allah and the fact that the required etiquette children learn from the parents. This is the saying of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what kind of parents we want to be to show an example to our children because they are going to be parents too. We as either father or mother dealing with the challenging moments with each other require grace, tactfulness, wisdom, Patience and humility. Asbaru wa sabiru wa rametu. Though the message is for whole of humankind, Muslim kind, but more important, it has to be between the husband and wife. So the parents with children must be mindful of their attitude, circumstances, sensitivity, listening more than speaking, discussion, and focusing on the problem. The key to maintaining an open, intimate, and happy interparental relationship is to ask for and then ask for forgiveness too. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to forgive. Why don't we love to forgive each another? And the ability to do that, that is tied to each individual each individual's relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive, then we should forgive among ourselves. And if we remember that, it is related how much we are mindful towards our own creator, Lord, the God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created first parents, our original parents, Bibi Hawa, Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu was salam. God purpose in our dispute between husband and wife or between mother and father is to test our mindfulness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test? First of all, taqwa. If we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our conviction of faith to produce endurance through patience, resilience, and to make supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by glorifying His Almighty. This is the hope Allah gives us that we can actually approach our counterpart, our spouses, and solve the disputes by getting an opportunity to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we strengthen our faith and we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should also remember as father and mother, if we dispute, shaitan always comes in there to split between the husband and wife. So besides being husband and wife, we should concentrate more that we are the father and mother and whatever dispute comes, it should be in the interest of our children. And of course, to fight against the devil promptness. Because devil always prompts a husband and wife to fight to make the children suffer in their life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides 
with the message of tranquility. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as I recited the verse before from Surah Rum, verse number 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and among his signs is that he created for you humans, mates from among yourselves, that you may live in tranquility with them, and he has put love and mercy between you, verily in that are signs for the people who reflect. What are the signs between husband and wife? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given us the mercy, already given us the love between us. That love and mercy has to be completed for the sake of our children, for the sake of defeating the Satan who is all around us. And that will be only possible when we control our own nafs ammara. The parents of today also have the parents. The children of today will be coming parents of tomorrow. The Prophet ﷺ mentions, father is required to provide all provisions to the mother of his children, including clothing, shelter, security, not to strike her, and do not revile her and always provide companionship. It's not that in the market, the husband and wife are there by one reason or the other, husband got angry and he drives home straight, leaving wife behind. No, this is not the wisdom and this is not required. So what it means, father and mother should always be as one to show an example as it has been said in the hadith. In case of dispute among parents, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided all of us to practice self-restraint for the development of understanding for the development of etiquette in oft forgiving, we expect forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we should also be prepared to forgive others. When parents read, understand, and practice what has been guided to them, then resolution of such disputes between mom and dad or husband and a wife becomes very easy. And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us and so our existence in eternity would be fantastic. That is the word Allah. Muad bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentions that whenever a woman who may be mom or who may be wife or both, whenever a woman harms her husband who may be father, or husband, or both. In this world, that is without any due right, his wife among the Huris in Jannah. Huris in Jannah. Will say, you must not harm him. I mean, the Huris will say to the wife or the woman of this world, living in this world, that you must not harm your husband. May Allah destroy you. He is only passing guests with you and is about to leave you to come to us. Hadith Tirmidhi. Same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Nisa, verse number 129. And he will never be able to be equal in feeling between the wives. <laughs> Let me clarify that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted we Muslims to marry up to four. Permitted. But recommended in the Quran is to marry one. Because you cannot make the justice among all. It is better for you to marry one. And also it is better for you to marry one. Because the law of this country where we live says one wife. But those who wants to marry more than one. May Allah help all of them. Those who wants but should be prepared about the prosecution, the consequences. And in my lifetime, I am not talking about our Arab brothers in Saudi Arabia. They are very good. They have three and four. But in India and Pakistan, whoever marries second wife, his life became miserable because he did not marry on guidelines of 
Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they marry because of some other reasons. So Allah subhanahu wa taala says, and you will never be able to be equal in feeling between wives, even if you should strive to do so. So do not incline completely toward one and leave another hanging. And if you amend your affairs and be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa taala, then indeed Allah is ever forgiving and merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging here also between mom and dad, reconciliation. Between husband and wife, reconciliation. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Nisa verse number 32. And do not wish for that by which Allah has made some of you exceed others. Enviousness is the trick of Satan. My wife is not good, your wife is gorgeous. This is the psychology which Satan creates in our mind. We should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say that my wife is the beautiful, most beautiful woman in the world. The other wives are my sisters. The wives of my brothers and friends, they, they're my sisters. So if that is the conviction, and that is the conviction we have to develop. Because sometimes that also becomes a cause of dispute between husband and wife and mom and dad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not wish for that by which Allah has made some of you exceed others. For the men is a share of what they have earned and for the women is a share of what they have earned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines the rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watches us. Observes us. So we cannot escape. So our heart has to be very, very clear, as clear as much possible. Even if we get some bad feeling, as long as we don't spit it out from our mouth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not write or will not guide his angels to write. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. When you have such feeling, ask Allah of his bounty. Supplications. This is the best shield against the satanic waswas, satanic instigation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ask Allah for his bounty. Indeed, Allah is ever of all things knowing. Now let us touch a little bit of reasons of disputes between father and mother in the family between husband and wife let us decide one thing that gone are the days when mother of the children used to rely completely upon the father of their children for provisions and desires of the children now mothers of the children could work with better jobs especially in Canada they can have a better status and salaries than the father of the children. Most of the times we do see that is the reason of disputes in the family. They have the children, mother is getting, let's say wife is getting more salary and the father or husband is getting less salary and the tension increases without tolerance because one price over other and separation happened and the children by the end the court grants the children to the mother, the father lives, father lives somewhere else and the children live somewhere else. They are unable to meet, meet each and other. This is the reality, ground reality in this country. So in alternate terms, the issue of a wife working outside the home can become a contentious issue. And such issues should be decided before the marriage. But what about those new couples who are coming from India and Pakistan, wife was not working in there. Now wife thinks that she can work much better. She has to work. She has to work. So that has to be decided between husband and wife so that the problem doesn't arise. Tensions, challenges will be there. But again, the guidance of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already there. One of the ways to avoid arguments about who earns what and the status 
simply make an easy budget. Though it is a responsibility of the father to look after all the expenses, if mother adds, and mother will definitely add for the sake of children, for the love of her husband. To simply make an easy budget, which tracks expenses, income, investment, and establishes a framework for taking care of regular family necessities with thankfulness to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we are thankful to Allah, Allah gives more. If we are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gives more. If we have patience, Allah gives falah to us. If we make istighfar continuously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suffices everything what your desires are there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also removes the seeds of jealousy from us because we are continu continuously seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing is, our parents are also the children of their parents. Means we, me as a parent, we are also the children of our parents. If father takes more care of mother's parents and mother equates it with reciprocation, then this segment of dispute would subside for good, inshallah. The problem comes in all the families that when father complains about his wife's parents or when the wife complains about husband's parents. Oh, it's a big time dispute. No, before it should come, the husband should always love wife's parents to be in the forefront to take care of that. And you will see, or we will see, or we see, inshallah, the wife will take care of husband's parents. The very question, so many times the ulama were contacted, the wife says she has no responsibility to cook for their in the foreign law. That will not happen. Because that is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the warmth in the heart, in the love of husband, in the love of wife, and husband and wife together, they take care of their parents. And that is what the integrity of the family is all about. So, when parents become dependent on their children, this is another issue. The parents are here, but their parents, when they come from India, Pakistan, Egypt, and they want to live with, the, with, the, with their son, the problem happens too. If such children, husband and wife, they are mindful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what are the rewards given in the service of the parents. Only one thing I will mention. A person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to go to Jihad. The Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Any one of your parents alive? Yes, my mother. Go and serve her. That is your biggest Jihad. You can understand that, what the Jihad means. While there is a verse, In furu khifafa wa thaqalu wa jahidu bi amwalakum wa anfuzikum fi sabilillah dhalikum khairin lakum in kuntum ta'lamun. The verse is there, but at the same time, the saying of the Prophet, serve thy parents. If your parents need your help and you have to be there, your jihad is not jihad for either struggle, challenge, whatever it is. Dear brothers and sisters, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inna Allah yuhibbu abduhu, abduhu al-mu'min, al-faqeer al Hazrat Imran bin Hussein radiallahu ta'ala has mentioned that the messenger of Allah said Allah loves his believing servants who are poor. Does not beg, don't beg and have many many children. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those? Because they trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us, those who are confined to one child per parent, two child per parent, to show them that, look, he trusts more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than anyone else. And it encourages also to support such a family so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases our risk also because if we give one, we get 700 times. If we give, 
in the month of Ramadan, how much it goes further up, I had no idea. Now, today is uh, 11th of Muharram. I mentioned about the fasting. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned to fast 9th and 10th or 10th of 11th. But Prophet fasted 10th. And he said, next year, if we are alive, we'll fast two days. But this fast has nothing to do with the tragedy of Karbala. Why I should mention in here? Because people are confused about it. It is about saving the Muslimin during the time of Musa salam from Pharaoh of Egypt. The Jews also fast, they call it the day of Exodus. But the event in Karbala is important to us because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions the one who harmed Fatima, he harmed me. And in another saying, the Prophet ﷺ used to love his grandchildren. In one occasion, Abu Huraira was there, he took the hand of Hassan. He said, Oh Allah, I love him. So please love him and love those who love him. Abu Huraira said, Wallahi Lazim from that day, whenever I see Hassan and Hussein, اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واستغفر طعامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين وبشر الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أن لهم جنات تجري من تحت الأنهار كلما رزقوا منها ثمن في الرزق قالوا هذا الذي رزقنا من قبل وأوتوا به متشابها ولهم فيها أزواج متهارة وهم فيها خالدون وأقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وعتبه